Minister Nixon will now make his announcement. Well, good morning, everybody, and uh, it's great to be here in Edmonton for another important housing announcement. I want to thank Gord Johnston from Savita, the CEO of Savita, for being here with us today, as well as Nancy Hughes, who's the COO of Bethany Care Society. You'll hear from both of them in a moment. I'd like to start off by recognizing that today marks National Housing Day, and we are also nearing the end of uh, Edmonton Housing Month. Uh, housing, obviously, is very critical. Uh, at all times inside our society, but some of the challenges that we are seeing across our country and across our province emphasize the need of our housing and in particularly the impacts of when we don't have enough housing on people that call Alberta and Canada home. We are working on creative solutions all across the province to be able to increase both our attainable and affordable housing supply. And one of the things that we heard loud and clear over the last several months was the need for more funding to keep affordable homes up to date. Uh, we heard that very loud and clear over the summer, which is why in September I announced an additional $16 million in capital maintenance and renewable funds, renewal funds, to bring old affordable housing units back online on top of the $94 million that the Alberta government is already spending in 2023 on capital maintenance and renewal. And today I'm pleased to be here to announce what's going to happen with that $16 million. We've been working with over 30 housing providers across the province to be able to invest that money in the most strategic way to have the largest impact possible. This investment will now bring uh, approximately 100 affordable homes back online and will keep another 300 available through preventative maintenance that would have come offline without this investment. The types of projects that we are investing that $16 million in include repairing roofs, which I believe is taking place for the facility that I'm in today, replacing windows, upgrading elevators and seniors apartments, replacing furnaces, boilers and ventilation systems, and making sure that existing structures will be there available for people to use them. Since 2019, uh, our government, the Alberta government, has invested nearly $780 million to build more than 4,600 units of affordable houses across the province. Together with our partners, we're also supporting $9 billion in investment between now and 2031 to create another 25,000 additional units of affordable housing in Alberta. And our stronger foundation strategy is going to ultimately help us support 82,000 low-income households by 2031, which is an increase of 40% for our affordable housing stock in our province. We can't do this, though, without long-term collaboration with nonprofits, housing providers, municipalities, and other important organizations that help us deliver new and innovative and sustainable housing solutions tailored to each individual community. Uh, we will continue to identify priority projects with our partners and continue to, to invest significantly to make sure that Alberta continues to be the best place to live and the most affordable province in the, in the province. Uh, and I would like to now introduce you to Gore Johnson, who's the CEO of Savita, who can give you some ideas about how this investment will impact his important organization. Gord? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I've got to lower the mic a little bit. Uh, so thank you, Mi Minister. Nixon, it's such a pleasure to be here alongside you and my colleague Nancy from, from Beth, Bethany Care. So National Housing Day is such an important occasion, providing us all with the opportunity to reflect on the critical role of safe, affordable housing across our country. Affordable housing is not just a roof and walls. Having a safe, affordable place to live allows people and families to thrive, stay employed, do better in school, and access community services. This $4 million investment in capital maintenance and renewal in Savita operated affordable homes is so very much welcome. While housing needs are s s significant and new developments such as those Savita has recently completed in Londonderry and Lendrum are still necessary, investments such as this are a great example of how collaboration and leveraging existing resources can have an immeasurable impact. Through partnering with all levels of government, we at Savita are able to house more than 15,000 people. This $4 million in funding will help to ensure that we can continue to maintain and update hundreds of the close to 3,500 community housing properties we manage on behalf of the government of Alberta. Through previously received government investments this year, we have been able to renew more than 100 homes and communities including installing new kitchens, bathrooms, flooring, and upgrading building foundations. This new funding will allow us to build on the momentum already gained, continue to update and renovate 
an estimated additional 120 homes. As a result of this combined funding, close to 700 people in Edmonton will have access to refreshed, safe, and affordable places to live. Twiddle Place, where we stand today, is one of at least 17 communities that we will, would the, that we will be able to prepare for roof replacement as we invest these funds over the coming months in planning that critically important work. These types of infrastructure investments are incredibly important and, and ensure that those homes already in place are ready for the next family. Investing in existing infrastructure is a wise expenditure of funds. The broad range of updates and renovations we have planned not only help to reduce future maintenance costs, but also extend the usable life of these homes. Revitalizing homes is of critical importance to address the affordable housing challenges many are facing in our community today. These homes helped to give thousands of Albertans access to safe, affordable places to live. Over and above sweet renewals, these funds will allow us to make investments like a new wheelchair wash for many of those living in our Sir Douglas Bader community, improve site lighting to enhance community, community safety or new s sidewalks. All will have a meaningful positive impact on those living in homes operated by Savita. Minister Nixon, on behalf of Savita, I want to express our sincere gratitude to you and your colleagues at the Government of Alberta for this much needed investment. I'd now like it to hand it over to Nancy. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Johnson and Minister Nixon. My name is Nancy Hughes, and I'm the Vice President and Chief Operating Officer of Bethany Care Society. Bethany is one of Western Canada's largest providers of care, housing, and community services for seniors and adults with disability. We are proud to operate over 850 affordable, independent living spaces for seniors, of which 404 suites we manage for the Government of Alberta's social housing program. The funding provided through today's announcement is vitally important to organizations like ours so that we can support those in need of this very uh, valuable asset. It assists us, uh, the funds assist us to optimally maintain and improve the buildings that our tenants call home. We are very grateful to the government of Alberta and they're, they're, as we partner to create caring communities for Albertans. Thank you. We'll now have the minister uh, start his media availability. We'll start on the phone lines. Just a reminder, if you could state your, your name as well as your outlet, we'll do one question and one follow-up. Operator, could I get the first caller, please? Matthew Black, Edmonton Journal. Oh, good morning, Minister. I was just looking for your reaction to yesterday's full fiscal update for the federal government, uh, specifically its plans for housing. Uh, what do you make of the uh, you know, we, we are happy to see the federal government invest in housing in any way. Uh, that said, what I have seen so far from uh, the announcement yesterday is that it appears to be uh, nowhere near adequate uh, for the challenges that provinces are facing when it comes to uh, both affordable and attainable housing stock decline uh, across this country. Uh, there's not a lot of details. Um, I guess some of those details may come in the new year. There's no guarantee. Uh, that that money will come to Alberta in, in any way. Most of it's focused on loans, which uh, I think are, are, are a tool that should be used to address the challenge that we face. But we need uh, more significant and, uh, money brought to the table by the federal government uh, to support both uh, the province and municipality's ambition when it comes to addressing the affordable housing crisis. Uh, and I, I will be clear, at the end of the day, the federal government uh, has created this crisis through uh, policy decisions that have created an unprecedented inflation situation uh, and lack of investment uh, on the CMHC side and other areas for too many years. So I, again, I continue, I met with Minister Fraser the other day to call on him for adequate per capita funding across this country to make sure that we can meet uh, the needs of, of all of our citizens in this country. And I have also been clear that Alberta is already continuing to invest significantly in affordable housing, and we will continue to invest more uh, if we can get our federal partner to the table to do so in a significant way. So, uh, again, good to hear that housing was part of the update, uh, but I, I think we have a long way to go, and we need to continue to encourage our federal government uh, to step up to the plate quickly. Do you have a follow-up? 
Uh, yeah, Ms. Minister McIver issued a statement a couple of days ago speaking out about jurisdictional concerns in Ottawa over half. Um, I'll try to ask him about that later, but I hope you give me a sense of what the concern there is. Is it Ottawa will encourage them to build the wrong kind of housing in the wrong place? Isn't any housing good housing? Well, a, a couple things. First, I, I think uh, Mr. McIver's concerns will not just be for housing. Uh, across the board, we uh, see the federal government going to municipalities and other organizations that are, are primarily funded by the provincial government uh, without any coordination with us. I will speak to, to housing specifically, though, and the challenges that we face when the federal government does that. In this province right now, we have dozens of credible, affordable, shovel-ready projects ready to go that have been funded by the provincial government and municipalities that are waiting on federal partners, uh, which is how it's been done in the past. And so when the federal government does not coordinate uh, with provinces, we end up seeing projects like that uh, go on hold and investments go in into the wrong areas. Uh, further to that, uh, you see Quebec, who has a law similar to what Minister McIver is referring to, getting significant funding deals between provinces and the federal government to build significant amount of housing inside their province, all because they have to come and work with the province. So, you know, we want to work with all of our partners, municipalities, the federal government, uh, and our nonprofit partners to be able to accomplish these objectives. We can't do that, though, if the federal government won't come to the table and work with the province in a meaningful way. Uh, I think there'll be other areas of funding where, uh, you know, it, it'll be different for different ministries, and Minister McIver can probably speak to that in more detail. But from my perspective as the housing minister in Alberta, we want the federal housing minister at the table. We want to invest significant money to be able to make sure that we can set up our country and my province for success for decades to come. That's all the questions we have. Thank you.